what's up family god bless you this is dory love for the ministry of the word and this is behind the curtain the very first one so the first um video i decided to take y'all behind the curtain on is one of my favorites it's the first time that i was ever on the news and there's such a cool backstory behind this one so yeah, wait then we're on the news so if you remember this one it's it's called um it's the video where it starts off with hate free, hate speech or free speech. We'll watch some of it, and then I'll comment on it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Public preaching. Many consider it to be freedom of speech, while others say it's a way to impose personal beliefs on others. All right, so real quick, I'm going to give you the backstory on this video. So before um, this um, interview happened, the day before I was preaching on homosexuality. I was preaching on homosexuality, and this uh, lesbian girl started crying. She started crying and standing right, before, right in front of me. Saying, I can't believe you're saying all this. I can't believe you're, you're saying all this. And then, you know, <clears throat> she was crying. I said, um, good, good. It's good that you're crying. Because you, you have, um, that's godly sorrow. Now I said, you, you repent. You need to repent now. You need to repent. And so um, after that, so of course, someone called the police. The lady called the police. And just 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 for uh, for reference, this was like, I was still new to street preaching. I hadn't, you know, got... Um, I hadn't, I hadn't, I don't have, I didn't have the compassion and the understanding and the patience and the kindness that I had. So I would have had this totally different, but God used it. So she cries. I told her, yeah, that's good that you're crying. It's godly sorrow. And I say, yeah, you need to repent. You know, you need to repent, turn away from your, your lesbianism. And then you have nothing to cry about. So I kept preaching. And then uh, Officer Guzman, this dude named Officer Guzman came out with his crew and he said, basically, look, you got to pack this stuff up and you got to get out of here because you're making people sad or whatever. And so we went back and forth for a minute. I don't see how me making someone sad means I have to leave. But once again, I was a new street preacher, didn't really know the laws that well. So I packed this stuff up. We ended up going over to the food court. We ended up sitting down at the food court, having a discussion with a uh, Muslim dude. And that Muslim dude, we were going back and forth. Like He was like, oh, yeah, Christianity is whack. I'm like, no, nah, Christianity is, is the truth. Oh, no, Christianity is a lie. So we were going back and forth. And then you know what? I finally just said, in the name of Jesus, lying spirit, um, go. lying spirit, go in the name of Jesus. And as soon as I said that, <clears throat> you start coughing and doing you know all types of stuff. So it was actually a blessing. The cop didn't even know that he actually was used by uh, God to get us off the block so we could go talk to the Muslim guy. And I also told the cop because I said I, I had a dream that I saw a cop, um, but the cop was bald. So I was like, yo, bro, I had a dream last night that cops were going to come and, and, and talk to me. But that cop that was in my dream, he was bald. So I told him, yo, bro, you better start drinking onion juice because maybe God is telling me you're going to go bald. <laughs> and so amen. So, that was, so that's the, more the backdrop the day before this happened. Let's get back to the video. I'm here at Young and Dundas, where it happens frequently, but now one of our viewers is raising concerns after what he claims was a hateful encounter. He was bringing out, you know, how homo, uh, sorry, sorry, homosexuality was so bad, how homosexuality is not recognized by God. I never said homosexuals aren't recognized by God. God knows that there's homosexuals in the world. What I actually said is that God doesn't recognize homosexual marriage. God doesn't recognize homosexual bishops. God doesn't recognize homosexual clergymen, homosexual pastors, any homosexual that claims to be um, a leader of the church. I said, God doesn't recognize them. They are in sin. And I said, God doesn't recognize um, a marriage between two same-sex people. He doesn't recognize that. He only recognizes marriage between a man and a woman. So that's what I actually said. Back to the video. Uh, yeah, it is a sin, according to the Bible. Amen. I did say that. But it was hatred uh, in his voice. Yep, there you go. When you can't say anything intelligent, you just throw out the word hate. Oh, he had hate in his voice. By saying that I had hate in my voice, he's trying to assume my intent. Now, we have uh, laws against hate speech in the country that I live in. And had I said anything hateful, um, I would have been arrested. Everything that I said is protected under my constitutional right of religious expression. As long as the Bible says it, I can say it. The Bible does say it's a sin. The Bible does say that a marriage is between a man and a woman. And the Bible does say that, um, you know, bishops should be a man of one wife. 
The Bible says the Bible says all these things. So the fact that he's saying, oh, there was hatred in his voice, it means he couldn't find anything wrong with what I said. So he tries to assume intent. There was hatred in his voice. There was no hatred in my voice. I speak with passion. Um, I speak with authority. But there was absolutely no hatred in my voice. So, you know, that was just a cop out. Back to the video. Stan Howe says he doesn't usually pay any mind to the public preachers who frequent the corner of Young and Dundas. Now, right there, look at that. Right there, that's Philip Blair. He's uh, from Torture Christ Ministries. That's the first time that he came out here, I think, a year or two ago. We didn't know who he was, but we um, let him preach on the mic after, you know, after we test the spirits a little bit, we let him preach on the mic. So I thought that was pretty cool. Didn't know who Philip Bella was. Came out there, and the same time he came out there, he got on the news. And um, and that that was like this. All this happened like in a great week, a week when like God was really moving. We were seeing people getting healed, people were accepting Christ. All these great things were happening. And so we would stop going downtown with money. We would keep our we wouldn't we wouldn't go downtown with money because we were like you know what God's gonna pay for our bus fare, God's going to give us food, and he really did. Every day we went down there, someone would give us 2 or $3 so we could get home. We wouldn't ask for it. They would just give it to us. And this day when Philip was there, we said, you know what, we're not bringing money for food. And the cool thing about it is the first time we met Philip, he ended up buying us food. We didn't ask for food. He just bought it for us. So, you know, we were really on fire that week. We were really full of, full of faith, full of Holy Ghost. And um, that's when Philip Blair came out. Amen. Back to the video. But that last night, as he and his boyfriend walked by, the messages of hate cut through him like a knife. For me, it was heartbreaking, you know, to hear that. Uh, I've lived in Toronto for a very long time, and I've been gay for a very long time, and I've never heard that before. Amen. Amen. That's right. I'm glad he's never heard that before. That means that he got convicted by the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what that was. He was walking by. He heard the word of God. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit convicts the word of sin. So that's exactly what happened. He got convicted of that sin. And he's like, yo, I've never heard that before. And that's a good thing. You know, when, when, I, uh, when uh, my brothers that I was with at the time or everyone at the church that I was going to at the time heard this, my, they were happy, like, oh, yeah, he got convicted. He got convicted. My auntie called me from California and just screaming on the phone, hallelujah, boy, hallelujah, hallelujah. That dude got convicted. That dude got convicted. So, amen. You, you haven't heard this before. Well, you've heard it now, and now your blood is off my hands. Amen. Back to the video. We reached out to the city to find out if public preachers require a permit. They do not. The city says it's a freedom of speech issue and a matter of people's tolerance. If the city receives a complaint, they send an officer out to investigate for safety purposes. But public preaching is perfectly legal. I don't think there's any room for that in, in public. And I think uh, the authorities in one way or another would do well to, uh, to quell that kind of speech. Who is this guy? They just get some random guy off the streets. I don't agree with this and they need to do their best to stop it. Who are you, random guy? Why does your opinion matter? Let's get this random guy off the street and get his opinion. Now we found the preacher who Stan Howe says offended him. We don't discriminate. We don't believe just because you're homosexual, uh, God doesn't love you. Man, God looked out for me right there. He, I said, we don't, we don't discriminate. We don't say just because you're gay, God doesn't love you. And I'm so glad they caught that because that contradicts everything that dude says. Everything he says, there was hate in his voice and blah, 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 blah. blah. That's not true. You can see right there, it says that we do not discriminate. We're not saying just because you're gay, God does not love you. What a beautiful, they caught, what a beautiful um, point to catch. The cameraman or the um, news lady, good job. That's exactly what you do. I don't even have to say anything after that. They caught me actually preaching and actually expressing how I truly feel. So it can't be hate speech. Plus, hate speech is illegal in Canada and you can be arrested for it. So... That's that. Back to the video. His name is Dory Love, and he fully admits he said what Howe claimed, but told me the comments were not directed at Howe. He was just preaching the word of God. All these immoral things, sexual immorality, homosexuality, um, um, adultery, fornication, these things lead to spiritual punishment. Amen. They do lead to spiritual punishment. And uh, the, the funny part about that is I've never been interviewed on, on um, camera before for a television show or whatever, for news. 
So I thought I'd be nervous, but the thing is, they caught me right after I got through preaching. So I was still full of the spirit. So when they caught me, all these words just came out quick, 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 quick. Now they caught the one part that I said, you know, homosexuality, adultery, all these things uh, lead to spiritual punishment. I had just read Matthew, so spiritual punishment, I figured, was a perfect word to say rather than hell. But I preached the gospel to that lady. I was telling her all... All, all of, um, you know, if someone was in a burning building, if someone was driving down the street and the cliff and there was a cliff at the end, I told her, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. I asked her if she saved. I asked her if her cameraman saved. And I just preached to that lady. She caught the one that she, out of like two minutes, two or three minutes of me preaching at her or preaching to her and sharing the gospel with her and her cameraman, that's what she caught up. Oh, that's what she cut up and put on there. Like these things come with spiritual punishment. But that was only one thing that I said out of like a three minute conversation. But it's cool. I'm glad she put it up there because it does come with spiritual punishment and um, they should know that. But this, you know, I've been uh, unfairly represented on other news um, coverage, but I think this one was pretty fair. I think this one they did a OK job. And um, especially when they caught that part where we say we don't discriminate. So amen to that. Back to the video. I mean, that's a personal attack on people's sexual preferences. It has nothing to do with religion. It's not religion. It's a personal attack on his sexual preferences. It is religion. You think I'm out there like, I'm going to go outside today and attack your personal uh, sexual preferences. That doesn't make any sense. It is religion. It's not even religion. It's sin. You're right. I'm out there and I'm attacking sin. Because sin leads to death. And the Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of truth. And so... That's exactly, or all should come to repentance, and that's exactly what I'm out there doing. And it's not religion, it's following Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, go on to the world, preach the gospel to every creature. So that's exactly what I'm doing. It's not no guys. That's another thing. Homosexuals always say crazy stuff like, oh, they're just trying to hide religion so they can come out here and condemn us. That's not true at all. Um, we know that there is spiritual punishment, as I said in this video, for those who don't accept Christ, for those who reject Christ. And we want to save people from that. Or we want to we want into we want them to accept Christ and Christ can save them from that. So it's not no, you know, hidden agenda. Oh, I'm going out there under the guise of of uh of religion so to tuck to attack your personal preferences. That's that's not true at all. And that's just like a political, you know, some political jargon and rhetoric that people say um to justify their sin. He knows he's in sin. He said, oh, I've never heard anything like that before, and it, and it cut me to my heart. I'm like, yeah, amen. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin. Now you've been warned. Now your blood is off my hand. Repent. Back to the video. Um, I think, you know, a lot of times that people use religion as a way to um, justify hate. Now, the preacher, Dory Love, who's actually behind me right now, he told me that police actually came to him last night and told him to leave. Stan was not the one who actually called the police. Now, police actually did come here just a few moments ago, though this time they didn't shut him down. They just asked him to tone it down. The cops have obviously not deterred him. Love says he will continue to come back, quote, by the grace of God. Man, and I don't think I said I'll be back, you know, by the grace of God. I think that was a good quote and a great way to end the video. But I think I said something like, she's like, are you going to are you gonna preach out here? I'm like, yeah, by God's grace, I'll be out here every day. So, I mean, I guess you could say I said by the grace of God, but I didn't mean like by the grace of God. I meant by God's grace, meaning that as long as, long as God graces me to work in his kingdom, then I'll be out here again. But anyway, that's that. She, he, he's, the last thing he said was, um, yeah, you know, high religion to justify hate. You know, nobody got no time to hit the streets, bro, and hate people. Like, you know what I mean? If it, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, um, if I wasn't mandated by God to go out into the streets and preach the gospel to every creature, I'd be at home. I, mean, I like being at home with my wife. I like being at home with my kids. Um, so to go out and hate people, like I don't got time to hate people. That's 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 bananas. It's, that thinking is even bananas. You know how much energy it takes to hate people? Please. I don't even got time. I'm not gonna sit around and you know you gotta you got when you hate someone that means like you go home you're thinking about them like oh I hate that person I can't believe they're doing that you know what I got no time to think about nobody else when I get home I gotta read my Bible I gotta pray I got kids to look after I got a wife to take care of you think I have time to sit around and hate strangers that's just asinine so that's that that's the first video uh, behind the curtain street preaching behind the curtain video 
Um, so now you can see, or now you can, um, you got the backstory. You got what I really said. You got what really happened. And I chose this one first because this is the one of the, it's, it's fast, first of all. It's only like, what, two minutes, 37 seconds. But I'll put one of these up every single week. Every week I'll put another video up, or every three days, depending on how busy I am. I'll put a, a video up of street preaching, and you can see what I was thinking, um, what happened behind the scenes, what happened leading up to that video, what happened after that video. And I'll even tell you why I answered a question a certain way, and um, this, that, and the other. Right on. God bless you. Have a good day. Or it's probably, even if it's night, have a good night. God bless you. Dore out.